So friends, we were discussing about the effects of the micro jets that are produced whenever these micro jets produced during ultrasound extraction when they hit onto the plant cell surface. So first was the fragmentation and uh, we, we saw that how uh, these ultrasound waves or the micro jets or the bubbles that ex micro jets uh, that are produced after the bubbles explode and they cause a significant reduction in the size of the drug material. So the next effect that is produced by uh, these micro jets is erosion. And uh, you can clearly see in the picture, the first image shows you the normal surface of the boldo leaves. You can clearly see the trichomes, you can clearly see the stomata. Second picture shows surface after the drug was extracted by the maceration process. You can still see the trichomes are intact, stomatas are there. And in the third picture, you can see a significant change in the surface morphology after the drug was extracted with ultrasound assisted extraction technique. You can see the trichomes were eroded from the surface or they were they, their size was significantly reduced. The overall surface morphology was completely changed whenever the drug was extracted with the ultrasound wave assisted extraction and there was a significant increase in the overall extraction yield. Now whenever these the such kind of erosion occurs on the surface of the plant cells, it causes openings for the solvent to enter into the plant cell. Uh, these kind of openings or this entry of the solvent into the plant cells further increases the overall extraction efficiency. Next is the sonocapillary effect. Now this is also considered as one of the major factor in increasing the overall extraction efficiency after cavitation. Though the process is not very well studied or it is not very well explored, but it is believed that whenever the ultrasound waves or these bubbles explode and micro jets, they fall onto the plant surface, they causes the formation of micro capillaries on the surface. And these micro capillaries allow the entry of the solvent into the plant cell. vis a -vis, they also increase the depth of the solvent into the plant cell and once the solvent easily enter into the cell and not only enter but enter deep into the cell, it can easily solubilize the desirable components and it diffuses out into the bulk solvent and thereby increasing the overall extraction efficiency. Next is the sonoporation effect and uh, this was, uh, this effect was uh, studied whenever, uh, when the lipids from a yeast cell were extracted out. And as you can see in the first image shows the yeast cell which is quite intact and in the second picture you will see the yeast cell after they were extracted from the ultrasound waves. And you can see that on the surface small pores are formed once the ultrasound wave assisted extraction was complete. Again these pores help in the entry of the solvent into the cells thereby increasing the extraction efficiency. Another effect that is produced by the contact or by the impact of micro jets on the plant cell is a local stress and this effect local stress on the overall morphology of the surface and this effect was studied in a study wherein the basal leaves were extracted with the help of ultrasound assisted extraction. In the first image you can see the intact surface of the leaves wherein that round structure represents the glandular trichomes that are present on the surface. Second picture that is picture B shows the surface after the drug was or the leaves were extracted by the maceration. You can still see the distortion, slight distortion in the surface. Whereas the third Im image shows the surface after the drug was extracted by using ultrasound waves. And in this you can clearly see the complete disruption of the glandular trichomes and thus increasing the overall yield of linalool and eugenol content. Now this graph shows you the effect of maceration wherein you can clearly see the red and green lines show you the content of linalool and eugenol content when they were extracted by maceration process and the pink and the blue line shows you the content of eugenol and linalool when they were extracted with the ultrasound assisted extraction. It is not only the content was significantly increased but the duration of the time that was required to extract out that content was significantly lesser than that in, that was required in the 
maceration. So this is how uh, ultrasound assisted extraction or a modern technique is an effective technique in comparison to the conventional technique. Next effect is the detexturization effect that is produced by those microjets. Again, I will uh, explain this effect with the help of images and uh, this experiment was done on the caraway seeds wherein the terpene content was determined. The first image shows the extraction of the caraway seeds when it is it was done by maceration at around 70 degrees Celsius and this is the image of the surface of those seeds. Second image shows the extraction of the seeds when it was done by soxalate at around 70 degrees Celsius. You can clearly see the difference in the surface of the caraway seeds that was caused by maceration in comparison to that of the soxalate. And the third and the fourth picture shows you the effect of ultrasound assisted extraction or ultrasound waves on the surface of the caraway seeds. You can completely see the detexturization of the surface of the caraway seeds when the, they were extracted with the help of ultrasound waves. And these extraction are uh, the third images for 30 minutes and the fourth images for when the extraction was carried out for 60 minutes. And again you can see the reduction in the particle size in comparison to the extraction done for 30 minutes. So this is how these microjets have an impact on the surface or on the plant cells which cause an increase in the overall extraction yield. You can also see the effect in, in this form of the table wherein the content of caravone and limonene was significantly increased when they were extracted using ultrasound assisted extraction. But when the ultrasound assisted extraction was carried out at a higher temperature, the content was decreased and why it was decreased we will discuss further when, when we will discuss the effect of different parameters. Now we move on to the instrumentation of ultrasound assisted extraction or what type of equipment is required. The equipment contains four major components. First is transducer which is responsible for the production of ultrasound waves. Second is emitter or reactor which is responsible for the application of the waves that are produced. And uh, uh, by and large, uh, we will see that majority of uh, the labs either they use bath type of reactors or they use probe type of reactors or probe systems. And uh, it has been found that probe systems are far better than the bath systems. Then there is a thermostat which help in regulating the temperature and the timer which help in regulating the time of the extraction. So as I told you, now we move on to transducers which are the major component of the equipment. As I told you, these are the uh, components which help in generating the ultrasound waves and not only generating but they also help in detecting the ultrasound waves. And depending upon their mechanism, how they produce ultrasound waves, these transducers can be piezoelectric, they can be magnetostrictive, they can be capacitative or electromagnetic. Amongst all these types, piezoelectric transducers are the most widely used transducers in the ultrasonic extractors or ultrasonic equipments. And these piezoelectric transducers can uh, are made up of either of quartz, barium titanate, uh, lead zirconate titanate that is uh, PZT, polyvinylidene fluoride that is PVDF. So all these materials are used to make these piezoelectric transducers. Earlier these uh, uh, probe emitters or the probe sonicators were made up of titanium but later it was found that uh, during the extraction process those uh, probes they certain uh, cause fragmentation or uh, of the titanium particles into the extract and therefore now titanium is being replaced by either quartz or the pyrex material. In this image you can clearly see different types of uh, ultrasonicators. The first two images are of the bath sonicators. The first one is the normal bath sonicator. Second uh, is the bath sonicator which is equipped with a stirrer and the picture third and fourth represents the probe sonicators. Now as I told you that probe sonicators have a better efficiency because the probe is directly immersed into the reaction mixture or the mixture of the solvent and the drug material. But it has also been found with the probe sonicators that they significantly increase the temperature or the localized temperature of the solution where the probe is dipped into that mixture. And therefore, it is always advisable to have a circulating jacket of the cooling solution so that it can easily control the increase in the temperature during the extraction process. 
Now, these are the images of some of the industrial scale ultrasonic devices. The uh, first image is of probe systems and second one is of the bath systems and you can see the bath systems are available in different volumes uh, depending upon the amount of the drug that has to be extracted. Now, this, these uh, images show a slight modification of the conventional probe or the bath sonicators and uh, these are known as the continuous ultrasonic bath extractor or continuous ultrasonic probe extractors. Though it is not very much clear in the bath extractors, but you can clearly see in the probe extractor, it is connected with the two tubings. And these two tubings are nothing but these are the inlet and outlet of the solvent. So, you can continuously uh, keep on extracting the drug material and uh, the flow of the solvent is so adjusted that it allows sufficient time for the solvent to extract out the constituents. So, we can see that the, these ultrasonicators are available uh, in different sizes ranging from the laboratory scale to the industrial scales. Now, we move on to the different parameters that can affect the overall efficiency of the ultrasound assisted extraction. And these parameters can be categorized broadly into three categories. Uh, first one is the ultrasound parameters, second is the medium parameters and third is the plant matrix parameters. So, ultrasound parameters include the frequency and power of the ultrasound waves, intensity or amplitude of the ultrasound waves and shape and the size of the reactor that is used for extracting the plant material. The medium parameter will include the type of the solvent that is being used, the temperature of the medium and the presence or absence of the dissolved gases in the medium. Then the matrix parameters include the particle size of the plant material from which uh, we want to extract out the desired phytoconstituent or we, for which we want to prepare the extract. And whether that plant material is dry or hydrated, that also have an impact on the overall efficiency of the extraction. So, coming on to the first factor, uh, that is the frequency of the ultrasound waves. Now, we know that frequency is nothing but the number of the cycles per second and it is generally measured in hertz. Now, more number of cycles in given period of time, it means more number of compression and rarefaction phases. Now, we know that these micro bubbles are formed during compression phase and they expand during the rarefaction phase. That is, we have to allow, we have to give sufficient time to those bubbles to expand during the rarefaction phase. So, if we increase the frequency, that is, we are increasing the number of compression and rarefaction phases in given period of time. Therefore, we are not allowing the bubble to expand properly. And once the bubble are not expanding properly, they will explode less vigorously. Therefore, the micro jets that will be produced, they will be having less power and the overall extraction efficiency will decrease. And therefore, it is said that frequency is inversely proportional to the cavitation and the length of the rarefaction phase. So, if you want to increase the frequency, then definitely it will have a negative impact on the extraction efficiency of the process. So, there was an experiment done when the frequency of the ultrasound waves was increased from 20 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. And you can see when the ultrasound waves were used at 20 kilohertz, the average duration that was required for a bubble to burst was 10 microsecond and the average diameter of the bubble was around 330 micrometers. When this frequency was increased to 500 kilohertz, the average time was decreased, average time for uh, required by the bubble to burst was significantly decreased to 0.4 microseconds and the average diameter of the bubble was also significantly decreased and it was found to be 13 micrometers. This is the effect of the increase in frequency and this effect is a negative effect on the extraction efficiency. Further, it has also been found that higher frequency causes resistance in the mass transfer rate, thereby decreasing the extraction efficiency. But sometimes we have to increase the frequency of the ultrasound waves. So, in order to neutralize the negative effect of the increased frequency, we can use the higher amplitude or higher intensity ultrasound waves. How it happens, we will discuss further. Next factor is the power, that is the amount of the energy that is transferred. Now, this is an important factor for the reproducibility of the results. 
majority of the literature you will see you will find that either the frequency of the ultrasound wave has been uh, disclosed or the, uh, the duration of the extraction has been disclosed but not the power at which ultrasound waves were used. Now the power of the waves can be measured either by physical method or by the chemical methods and physical method involves the measurement of the pressure that is generated by the ultrasound waves and that pressure can be measured with the help of hydrophones or optical micro uh, microscopes or the heat that is generated by those uh, ultrasound waves in term of cal uh, calorimetric methods. Whereas chemical methods are widely used wherein they measure the amount of OH radicals that are formed during the ultrasound waves. Now whenever the ultrasound waves are passed through the media and these bubbles are explored uh, with such a high pressure and temperature, they break down the water molecule into hydrogen ions and OH radicals. And these OH radicals, the formation of the OH radicals or the amount of OH radicals will directly indicate the amount of energy produced by the ultrasound waves. Now these OH radicals are quite unstable and therefore this method is uh, very frequent, uh, very, uh, used very uh, in very less instances I will say. Whereas the second chemical method that is use of chemical dosimeters is uh, used in uh, many instances or frequently it is used to measure the power of ultrasound waves. Now chemical dosimeters are those which measure the amount of hydrogen peroxide that is formed. So as I told you that when the micro, uh, micro bubbles uh, these burst, these micro jet break down the water molecule into OH and uh, hydrogen radicals, these are unstable and reactive radicals, they undergo reaction and form the hydrogen peroxide. And this hydrogen peroxide, the amount of hydrogen peroxide can be measured. One such example of chemical dosimeter is an iodine dosimeter where the, wherein the hydrogen peroxide that is produced reacts with the iodine to form iodine molecules and these iodine molecules, the amount of iodine molecules can be measured with the help of UV spectrophotometer. So this is how you can measure the power of the ultrasound waves also and this the, the power can be represented by this equation wherein M is the mass of the solvent, Cp is the heat capacity of the solvent at a constant pressure and uh, uh, dt by dt is the rise of the temperature per second during the extraction. So it has been found that high ultrasonic power causes major alteration in the materials that are induced by the greater shear force that is produced by the high power ultrasound waves. So one has to be very careful while adjusting the power of the ultrasound waves because it may have a negative impact on the overall extraction efficiency. But by and large it has been seen that if you increase the ultrasonic power, it increases the extraction efficiency but up to a particular level. Next factor is the intensity or the amplitude of the ultrasound waves. Now these represent the energy that is transmitted per second per meter square of the medium. So we discussed that the frequency, increase in frequency will have a negative impact on the extraction efficiency because it will increases the compression and rarefaction cycles per second in a given unit of time. Now this negative impact of increased frequency can be neutralized with the help of increasing the uh, amplitude of the waves. By increasing the amplitude, we are increasing the intensity of the compression phase and with the we are also increasing the intensity of the rarefaction phase which help in the vigorous explosion of the bubbles which help in expanding of the bubbles and vigorous explosion of the bubbles, bubbles thereby producing the micro jets. But the downside of using higher amplitude is that it has a negative impact on the life of the transducer which is considered as the heart of the ultrasound uh, uh, or the ultrasonicator. Now with uh, by continuously using high amplitude uh, ultrasonic waves the life of the transdu uh, transducer reduces and with the passage of time it just act as a, a medium or a medium for agitation rather than sonication. So therefore one has to be very careful while selecting the high amplitude uh, ultrasonic waves. But if you have to use, we can use high amplitude uh, uh, waves when we are using viscous solvents or viscous media wherein we have to increase the frequency and when we increase the frequency we have to increase the amplitude of the waves. Next is the shape and the size of the reactor. So it has been found the flat bottom vessels are always better for the effect of the ultrasound waves. 
further the walls of the reactor should be thin which help in reducing the attenuation of the effect of the ultrasound waves. Position of the emitter with respect to the transducer has also an impact on uh, the overall extraction efficiency and this effect has been observed largely in case of bath sonicators. If you are placing your extraction vessel away from the transducer then the extraction yield is less because, because the ultrasound waves they attenuate until they reach the, the extraction vessel and therefore the overall effect decreases and the extraction efficiency decreases in comparison when the vessel is placed in, in the near vicinity of the transducer or exactly above the transducer. Then we come on to the probe emitters or the probe sonicators and uh, we discussed that they have a better efficiency rather than the bath sonicators. But the major downside of probe emitters is that the intensity of the wave decreases radially as well as axially because these probe uh, emitters are nothing but a, a type of a rod which amplifies the wave and they have a very limited area of contact with the uh, reaction mixture or the extraction media. And one should be very careful while spacing these probe emitters into the extraction media. They should be minimally spaced between the ultrasonic probe, uh, distance should be minimum between ultrasonic probe and the container of the uh, wall of the container in order to in order to minimize the attenuation of the ultrasound waves. Shape and the diameter of the probe have also been found to affect the extraction efficiency and it has been found that the stepped probes they have, uh, uh, have a better effect in, in terms of amplification of the ultrasound waves. Now this image shows you different types of probes that are used in probe sonicators and the fourth image that shows the stepped probe which has a better effect in comparison to all other probe ultrasonic probe emitters. Now we move on to the medium parameters and first one is the type of the solvent. Whatever solvent we have to select, it should have high solubility for the desired phyto constituent. If you are using a solvent which has poor solubility, whatever technique you may use, extraction results or the efficiency results or the yield result will not be uh, desirable or will not be acceptable. Viscosity of the solvent has also an impact on the overall extraction efficiency. Higher the viscosity, more will be the interaction, molecular interaction between the solute molecules or the solvent molecules and there will be lesser cavitation. So in order to overcome such kind of interaction, we use higher, uh, higher frequency ultrasound waves. Along with higher frequency, we use high amplitude ultrasound waves which decreases these interactions and causes the cavitation because more the molecular interaction higher will be the cavitation threshold and overall cavitation will decrease if you are using viscous solvents. Then the surface tension of the solvent also has an impact. Higher the surface tension, more will be the molecular interaction, more will be the molecular interaction, lesser will be the release of the gases from the solvent. Lesser release of the gases means lesser bubble formation, lesser will be the cavitation and negative impact on the overall extraction efficiency. Vapor pressure of the solvent also has an impact because if the solvent has an higher vapor pressure, then more amount of vapors will be entered into the bubble, lesser will be the uh, pressure gradient between inside the bubble and outside the bubble and therefore the collapse of the bubble will be less intense and uh, the microjets that will be produced will have less intensity, less velocity which will have a negative impact on the overall extraction efficiency. Next factor is the temperature and by and large we have seen that increase in temperature has a positive impact on the overall extraction efficiency because increase in temperature decreases the viscosity, it increases the penetration of the solvent into, uh, into the plant matrix thereby causing better extraction. Same is in case of ultrasound assisted extraction, increased temperature also causes increase in cavitation. But if we increase the temperature towards the uh, near the boiling point of the solvent, this will increase the vapor pressure of the solvent. And when vapor pressure is increased, then the pressure gradient between the bubble, uh, within the bubble and outside the bubble decreases, which cause less uh, intense uh, bubble collapse, thereby decreasing the extraction efficiency. So one has to be very careful while setting up the temperature. The next is dissolved gases. We know that cavitation occur due to dissolved gases. Whenever these gases are released, bubbles are formed and they help in the cavitation process. But if we apply external pressure, 
then we require higher frequency or higher energy ultrasound waves in order to overcome such pressure effects. So, dissolved gases by bottom line is dissolved gases are important for the cavitation process and they are overall important for the ultrasound uh, extraction process. Third category is of matrix parameters and you can clearly see the effect of the particle size on overall extraction efficiency. I have taken an example of clove bud wherein it was uh, extracted in uh, two batches. First batch included the entire clove bud and second batch included the reduced particle size or the powdered clove bud. And you can see significant increase in the eugenol content that was extracted when the powdered clove buds was used. So, lesser the particle size, greater the surface area, greater the surface area, more contact with the solvent, more contact with the solvent, better extraction. But if we use finer particles, then these finer particles sometimes forms agglomerates uh, in the places away from the transducers that further reduces the overall extraction efficiency. Now, these are few modifications that is ultrasound assisted uh, extraction along with soxalate extraction, ultra, which we discussed ultrasound along with the microwave assisted extraction, ultrasound along with supercritical fluid extraction and ultrasounds along with pressurized liquid extraction. So, these are the modification how modern techniques can work in combination with other modern techniques as well as with the conventional techniques. So, these are a few examples of ultrasound assisted soxalate extraction. Gracia and Castro are considered to be pioneers in developing this ultrasound uh, assisted soxalate extraction wherein uh, ultrasonic probe is placed in near vicinity of the soxalate extractor. This image shows further modification that was done by Chimet in 2012, wherein the ultrasonic probe sonicator is introduced or is placed within the soxalate by slightly modifying the overall structure of the soxalate apparatus. Then for, uh, Chimet and his group again they use this ultrasound along with the clavenger and they gave the name of this equipment as Sono clavenger which is widely used for extracting volatile oils from the plants. Now we move on to the applications of the ultrasound and we, uh, we know that ultrasounds are largely used for extraction of the secondary light, metabolites from medicinal plants, from fruits and vegetables. They are used in food industry, they are used to extract volatile and fixed oils from different types of plants. This table shows you different examples from where secondary metabolites have been extracted by using different types of ultrasonicators. They are also used in food industry for inactivation of the microorganisms which we have already discussed. They are also used in homogenization and emulsification of the food products. They help in filtration, co-crystallization and freezing of uh, the food material. They are also used in drying the food material, degassing and deforming of the food material they, and they, last but not the least they are also used for extracting the food items. These are few other uses. They are used for ultrasonic waves are used for cleaning, degassing of solvent accelerating the chemical reactions and liposome formation. So friends, this was all about uh, the ultrasound assisted extraction. Thank you.